Lot 31, I want to take a look at example four, which says use the table below to find and interpret the following. So we've got a numerical example where we're going to talk about function values and their inverses. And this is just to run in contrast to example three, where we had an analytical example of dealing with functions and their inverses. Right, so we've been seeing these three themes pop up many times. So we've got this numerical, excuse me, this analytical approach to inverses, where I actually give you functions to analyze, right? We have this numerical approach to inverses, where I just give you tables to analyze. And when we get down to example six, we will only have a graph. So we'll look at the graphical approach to inverses. So we're always attacking things through these three lenses, right? The analytical side of things, the numerical side of things, and the graphical side of things. And this particular example, example four, is the numerical version. All right, so let's, let's unpack these, right? We've got, it looks like minutes and miles, right? T and F of T. All right, so in 30 minutes, something traveled 20 miles, 50 minutes, 40 miles. So we can see this, this traveling, and I, I don't have any context, and that's okay, I don't really need it. All right, so let's compare and contrast F of 60 and F inverse of 60. All right, so when you have just your regular old function, the 60 in this case represents an X value. Although technically in this problem, it's a T value because we're using T and F of T. All right, but it's an input value. Now here, we have to keep in mind when we're talking about F inverse of 60, all right, when you're on the inverse side of things, the X's and Y's switch. So this is no longer an X value. This now represents a Y value, or for this particular problem, it represents an F of T value. So we're gonna use the table and figure out what the answers to these are. All right, so it's saying, what is the function at 60? Well, if we're talking about 60 and it's an X value, or really a T value, this is 60 minutes, right? 60 minutes here. So let me go ahead and talk about this is 60 minutes. Well, at 60 minutes, I had traveled 50 miles, right? So when I plug 60 in, I get 50 back out. Now here, this 60 represents something different. It's a Y value, or in this case, an F of T value. So this represents 60 miles. So what this expression is asking us is it's asking, well, how long, how many minutes did it take before you traveled 60 miles? Well, here I wanna look on the F of T's for 60, and I see that F of T, when it's 60, the time spent there was 70 minutes. Right, so here would be 70 minutes. This would have, let me label this 50 miles. So I'm using these two ordered pairs. All right, so the notation makes a huge difference, right? When you see f of x like you always have, the number in the parentheses is an x value, or in this case, again, a t value. When you see the inverse symbol, it's representing y values or function values, and it's asking you to go backwards, right? So here, I gave you an x, you gave me a y. Here. You gave me a Y, excuse me, I gave you a Y, you gave me back an X. All right, so X, Y, Y, X. There's going to be this repeated theme that X's and Y's flip-flop, right? Domains and range flip-flop when you're going from a function to its inverse. All right, so we're gonna practice another numerical example in example five, and I will see you in a bit, bye.